Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, Simon's asked me to have a look at some of the puzzles in the US Sudoku Championship for this year. Um, a test designed by Wei Hua Huang, who's a very notable name in Sudoku and has been since its inception. Um, and this puzzle is from part two of the test, and it's an anti-diagonal. Now, don't be fooled into thinking that because there's two diagonal lines running through this puzzle, that each of those lines contains the numbers one to nine. In fact, the rules with an anti-diagonal are that each of those lines contains a maximum of three digits. So I'm going to have a go at the puzzle now, and we'll see how that works out. Now, the first thing to be aware of is that, obviously, that the fact that each of the lines contains only three digits means, or a maximum of three, means that it contains exactly three and the same three in each of the boxes it passes through. Therefore, because the lines meet in the central cell, one of the digits will be in common, and only one. Um, so, let's just see what else we can spot, first of all. A bit of Snyder notation to start with. It must be a seven in one of those two cells because of the other sevens in the central row of boxes. Three is actually fixed there. Um, now, let's have a look at the constraint. Now, the fact that we've got a one eight here there are numbers that cannot be on this line. Remember, there's only three numbers on this line, and they clearly don't include 1, 8, 5, 4, or 3. So the three numbers on this line come from 2, 6, 7, and 9 in some order. Um, here, in this cell, we've got 7 and 9 in the column, 2 in the row. So that must actually be a 6. We now know there must be a 6 on the line in the other two boxes. Um, although we don't know exactly which cell it's in. So that was a very helpful cell, almost certainly deliberate. Um, this is quite likely to be a 7, but we certainly can't conclude that. This one is either 6 or 9. I think I might fill in on the, on the line the possibilities. So that could be 2, 6 or 7. That could be 2, 7 or 9. This can only be 6 or 9. This can only be 2, 7, 9. This could be only 6 or 9. That's very interesting. OK, we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, and 7, 9 here. So in the central cell here on this line, we can see that the only two possibilities for those two cells are 6 and 9. Now that means not only is that a 6, 9 pair in that box, and therefore either 2 or 7 in the central cell, but 6 and 9 must be on the line. So that's something we can probably use in due course. Now, we don't yet know whether the other number on that line is a 2 or 7, but we do know whichever one it is, it's in the central cell. Now, the other line doesn't have so much information. We know it can't be 3, 9, 4 or 5, um, but we also know it can't be six because only one of the numbers can be shared by the two lines. Um, and, it, and six is clearly not on that line in the central box. So it can't be three, nine, four, five, six. That leaves two, one, eight, and seven. And in this cell, we know it's not seven, two, or one. So it's an eight. So there clearly is an eight on this, for, on this diagonal line. Um, but we don't know exactly where. Now, what cells did us? 3, 6, 4, 5, 9, 2, 1, 8, and 7. So here it must be a 1. That's very interesting as well. So we don't know whether it's a 2 or 7 in the middle, but we do know that the other number that goes with it is a 1. So we've got 1 and 8 there. 1, 4, 5, 8, 2, 7. That must be a 3 in this box because of the 6, 9 pair. Um, and in fact, then we can work out that 2, 7 fit in the box. We know now that 7 is the other number on the central line. So that's a 1. And I mean, this has really helped. Again, there's a 1, 7 pair up there, so that's the 8. Um, down here, it's a 7 on the line, so we can get rid of the 2. We've got a 7, 9 pair. 6, 7, 9, we can get rid of the 2 possibilities there as well. Um, 
Um, but we don't know quite how that box resolves itself. But we do know that we've got six, seven, nine, one, eight, three is ruled out of those two. So there's a Oops, there's a three up there somewhere. I can't type three for some reason. That puts a three over here because of the three ruling it, ruled out from the top cells there. Um, threes, we can get down to just one pair left in the grid now. One in the central boxes must be up here, and that resolves our seven one pair there. That resolves our 7-9 pair down here. That resolves our 7-8 pair down here. Does that finish off this? No. Yes, this can't be a 7. It must be a 6. So we've got the lines, both diagonal lines complete, apart from this 6-9 pair in the middle still. Um, nine, seven, eight, one, three. So that's really good progress now. So six and five are the numbers not in the central row in this box. Nine there, and then a one, four pair there. That gives us eight and two at the other end of the line. Uh, eight, seven, six. That has resolved our nine, six pair. So the lines are completely finished, and now we're just solving it as a regular Sudoku. Um, it's one nine for some reason. I suddenly had a panic about which numbers I'd used there, but no need to. Two in the bottom left box must be there, and that's enabling us to finish row seven. Uh, that finishes that box in the bottom corner. Seven there. Four is the only number possible in that cell. One eight. Okay, and I mean, this is now just finishing off. So that really wasn't too hard a puzzle, thank goodness, um, as long as you spotted the right things to be starting off with. I mean, I hope you had a go at the puzzle first, and it'd be interesting to know if you found it as easy as that, or if I, you know, got a bit lucky with what I was looking for there. Um, Five, three. Anti-diagonal is quite an odd one to get your hand, your head around at first. I think just because one's so used to looking at a regular diagonal, um, and therefore the constraint doesn't seem at all obvious. So there we go. I'll just check whether that seems okay. Yeah, there's no complaint. So that's the solution to the anti-diagonal from the US Puzzle Championship. It's a great championship. Um, you do have to log on to the site. If you search for US Puzzle, uh, US Sudoku Championship, you'll certainly find it. Um, you do have to create a login and log on to get the puzzles, but they're well worth the effort. So do feel free to go there. Obviously, we will also bring you a few more in the future. So Hope you enjoyed that one. Um, do let us know if you enjoyed that sort of content. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and remember, we've if you join our Patreon site, you do get access to some new content puzzles that we're creating specially for our patrons. So look for us at Cracking the Cryptic on Patreon. Um, thanks very much for watching and hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.